Well, Ann Coulter, the best-selling author. Hey, if you're one of the few people who hasn't gotten the book, In Trump We Trust, it's a big New York Times bestseller for weeks, but it's the best book on Trump, uh, and you should go to AnnCoulter.com. You can get the book there. Uh, sign up for her column. Actually, you'll be the first to get it when it comes out. AnnCoulter.com. And, of course, follow her on Twitter. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. Uh, hey, so this uh, bomber... Uh, it'd be interesting to see, you know, normally a uh, terrible tragedy like this. We have a president who says, let's not uh, rush to conclusions about uh, uh, if it's a terrorist or it's a bomb. It, it could be from anywhere. Uh, so we didn't have to go through that this time. Yes, that was good. Um, I'm not sure losers was the appropriate. Name. Oh, I like that, though. <laughs> no, I, you shouldn't call them monsters or terrorists because to some people that's kind of glamorous. But just to call them what they are, just losers. and it probably... I'm afraid we're going to have to disagree on that. This sounds like a cute little name he'd come up with for Jeb! Exclamation point. But in any event, I was never really wild about this, this obsession on the right of, of calling you know, it radical Islamic terror. I mean, I guess it was fun to point out that, that Hillary would rather walk through hot coals than use those words. But... I just, I, I, okay, so th- say they say it. Um, that isn't the issue. We want action, not words here. Um, and I really wish Trump had, had already spent his four months in office pushing his campaign promises. The one campaign promise he's kept so far, um, which, and kind of a weak, weak need version of it, is the, quote, Muslim ban. Um, You know, in his immigration policy paper, uh, the most magnificent document since the Magna Carta, (laughs) uh, he he said we need a total immigration moratorium for a while. We need to get our books in order. Which we've done before in this country. We totally have. We did it for 20 years, um, starting, I think it was in 1924. It was the most prosperous period in American history. Um, Suddenly the working class had jobs and we weren't dumping low-wage workers on the country. The whole country became became wealthy. It was fabulous. Hey, but at uh, that time... The Trump promise, so why not just do that? Why do we have to do the travel ban on certain Islamic countries? You'd have none of these problems if you went back to the immigration policy paper. But putting that aside, let's call it, you know, the travel ban from certain terrorist-producing Muslim countries. He's looking a little prophetic on this right now. Oh, um, give him time. I'd, I'd much rather be defending him on that. I'd rather be defending him on... Deporting anchor babies, uh, something that has never um, been declared lawful, um, anchor babies, that is, by any court or any legislature. I'd rather be defending them on building the wall. Um, And also I would note to you that the Uh (laughs) the one brief period of peace we had from the mainstream media's insane hysterical conspiracy theorizing on Russia was during um, the hysteria over the travel ban, when they all had to rush to the airports and start weeping about how they want more Muslims. To <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't think of that. Yeah, you want to distract them, keep your promises. Yeah, But it's better to have them on this Russia thing because it doesn't exist. Let them chase this. Um, there are fun aspects to it. But yeah. <laughs> But to be honest with you, it's getting a little bit boring. I like liberals when they're insane but logical. This is just utterly illogical, and it's so boring. I mean, I know you can get your ratings up by appealing to a couple million nuts in the country. You could probably have, you know, a foot fetish station and get your two million viewers. Yeah. But for normal people, it's getting really boring. But particularly, you know, right after a terrorist attack like this, I, I write about it in my column briefly, um, which goes up later tonight. Um, I, I just gotten in and I spent, I think like a lot of people, spent all of Monday night watching TV and flipping around the channels. It was like the networks were coming in from different countries. <laughs> On CNN and Fox, it's of course all about this absolutely sickening oh, it just it breaks my heart. Did you see the picture of that little eight year old girl? Yeah. And the woman, the mother who called in to CNN, um, I mean, on one hand, it seems quite exploitative for, for Don Lemon to be talking to this crying mother. But on the other hand, she had called in because she wants people looking for her daughter, Olivia Campbell. Oh, my gosh, that's heartbreaking. I was checking the Internet all day. 
to see if they had found her yet, and it's starting. It's starting to look bad. Um, I mean, I don't think a kid would coming out come out of a concert after something like this or hear about it and say, "Oh yeah, I just forgot to call mom." No. Well, um, so it's I, really. I mean, they're attacking these little angels in our mother country, Britain. Um, no, Bill. Well, I didn't know. Any, I didn't know. Making other countries it, just stay home. The reason Trump won is because he said he'd put Americans first. So start putting Americans first and defend us. Yeah, I didn't know about any of this because uh, I was watching Rachel Maddow last night. It was just about <laughs> Russia and Comey and Flynn. Well, it almost was on Monday night. I mean, the main. <laughs> well, Monday she covered it, but Tuesday was all Flynn Comey. <laughs> <laughs> the main news thrust, even on Monday night, was on Russia with occasional updates on, you know, this little incident that happened in Manchester, England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they really got off that fast, but. Um, but, you know, these politicians, I just tweeted out, and, and I, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. I don't want anyone to die. I wish there were no terrorist attacks. But if, but if you know, these politicians, as they are, as the mayor of London is saying, oh, well, it's just a part of life. If this is our new normal now, I would really prefer for politicians to be the ones to get it rather than these innocent eight-year-old girls. Yeah, you know, they take that attitude, uh, officials in England and France. On the other hand, in Italy, they crack down hard, and they've done a much better job of preventing this stuff. And uh, to, for English uh, officials to say it's part of life, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. We know now that it, this guy was part of a network. They've had multiple warnings about this guy, even from his own family, and didn't take him off the streets. So they can't continue with this attitude in England, and I don't know why their citizens accept it. I don't know why our citizens accept it. I mean, that was part of um, James Comey's great stewardship of the FBI. The FBI had cleared Omar Mateen weeks before he shot up the Orlando Gay Nightclub. Um, the FBI and our entire government signed off on, on the Tsarnaev brothers. Uh, after repeated warnings from Russia, um, supposedly our greatest enemy in the world right now, oh no, they've been dealing with Islamic terrorism for a while, um, the FBI and everyone else signed off on the San Bernardino, one, the, the wife, and of course um, the husband was, was the son of one of our beloved refugees. It's, it's the entire West. We have just lost our will to survive, survive and save our society. Well, I don't think the people have, but the politicians absolutely will not do it. They are so brainwashed by this diversity is a strength, diversity is a strength. No, America had plenty of diversity uh, before the 1965 Immigration Act demanded that we bring in these primitives and savages. And this isn't a normal part of life. We did not have these terrorist attacks targeting little girls um, and nightclub goers and people at a community center or flying planes into our building. We did not have that for 200 years of the country's existence. That was, there's nothing normal about this. And to act like, oh, yeah, Muslim terrorists, yes, they were around in the colonial days. <laughs> no, there is one cause of this. It is our broken, really broken, I mean, not just broken, insane immigration policy, a policy that, that could have been designed by the Manson family to destroy the United States and the, and the West. <laughs> well, that's very well said. Uh, and your new column comes out tonight? Yes, it does. And uh, you should go to AnnCoulter.com, and if you sign up, you'll get this stuff before anybody, AnnCoulter.com, and follow her on Twitter, maybe the best tweeter on Twitter, and uh, of course on Facebook, and get her book, In Trump We Trust. Uh, it's the best Trump book. You know, so everybody's writing the Trump book now. You were the first. Yes, and also I exalt all of his most important campaign promises. Our next trick, Mark, is going to be to get Trump to read it. <laughs> I bet he's read it. <laughs> oh, but he has read it. Well, get the book. Reread it to remind him of why he. You'll he get so your funny. wall. Be a little patient. And the Muslim ban, and the moratorium. You'll get all this. And it supporting takes the anger babies, and I really want to deport the dreamers. I have had it with them. Oh, <laughs> go to ancoulter dot com. Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Take Bye. care.